when eosinophils degranulate, they release a wide range of toxic molecules. Some of these are enzymes which can digest protein. Some of these produce reactive oxygen species which are toxic. And this combination seems especially effective against parasitic worms and eosinophil counts rise during these parasite infections. Unfortunately, these molecules may also be damaging to the host tissues, and there are a number of conditions, such as asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, Hodgkin's disease, and others, where eosinophil counts are increased, and this contributes to the pathology of the disease. Eosinophil granules include a number of local acting hormones, such as the eicosanoid families of leukotrienes and prostaglandins, cytokines, growth factors, and these signals will attract more agents of the immune system through chemotaxis to enter an inflamed area. They can also signal surrounding cells given that Eosinophils are involved in the reorganization of tissues during the menstrual cycle, uh, in the development of the mammary gland, and also in the modification of tissues which may be problematic after chronic inflammation. For example, eosinophils can contribute to the remodeling of airways during asthma. Neutrophils were the first cells described which undergo extracellular traps in which membranes fuse and the DNA from the nucleus is released outside the cell to form a net which helps to trap microbes and provide a toxic environment for them given that the components of the granules are maintained in one local area. Eosinophils also produce these extracellular traps. In contrast to those of neutrophils, the granules apparently remain entire as they become incorporated into these traps, which is different from the condition in neutrophils where it is the components of the granules which are incorporated into the trap.